here's the project I'm going to use for the example. I chose this specifically because there are a lot of layers. So for example, if I want to start painting here, I can go to create a new solid, make sure it's the comp size, go to effect, a description plugins, paint link. You have to always remember to keep paint link selected or it's not going to work. Go to view, show layer controls and keep this on at all times while working with paint link. A lot of users will toggle this on and off so they can see their composition more clearly, but this UI must be enabled to actually interact with the plugin. Press add update keyframe. And you'll see that with Photoshop open, we've created a new keyframe in the timeline and it's open here. Paint link is going to screen grab all of the layers underneath it and create them as the background layer for this PSD. So for example, if I move this down underneath the text, I can press add update keyframe. In this case, it's just updating, not adding. And you'll see that it's done a screen grab for all of the layers beneath it. Simple concept, but important to understand. I'll move paint link back to the top layer and update one more time. And this is where I'm going to continue to work. So let's start painting. I won't go too crazy here. So you can see that this paint has been returned back to After Effects. And if we solo this layer, this is what it looks like. Probably the most important concept in Paint Link is how it's actually rendering this PSD. So we create these layers, PL Paint and PL Fill, and that's just because typically animators are going to have a strokes layer and a fill layer, and they're just for convenience. However, these layers aren't actually necessary. For example, I'll delete the fill layer. I'm also going to create some text just for example's sake. And you'll see that appears over here in After Effects. Periodically, we're taking PL Onion Skin and PL Background, which are two unnecessary layers, and we're deleting them, and taking all other layers in the Photoshop document, like text, paint, adjustment layers, whatever, and we're rasterizing them into this PL Render layer. And this PL Render layer is actually retrieved to be rendered with Paint Link. So just know that you can't actually delete this layer, and that these two layers have no effect on your render, simply because they're named PL Onion Skin and PL Background, and we choose to ignore them. In practice, this is something you'll never have to think about. I'm going to move forward one frame, and you'll see that Photoshop closes this. If I move back a frame, it's going to reopen it. Paint Link is saving each PSD when you change frames. So you don't have to actually worry about managing any of it. It's all done in the background. I'll press add keyframe again. And this time it's a little different because we can see the onion skin of the previous image. So I'll draw a little bit more here. And of course this is updating back in After Effects. And I'll move forward one more frame and do one more drawing. And you'll notice that the onion skin is only showing in Photoshop, not in After Effects. This is because we find it convenient to always see the onion skin when you're drawing, but not necessarily when you're going and playing back the animation. Maybe we should go ahead and delete this text layer. But anyway, moving back, you can see the forward skin and the backward skin, and I'll do another tutorial on onion skin later. But that is the basic workflow. And what I wanted to point out is that we can put this underneath another layer. So now we have this leg layer over top. And that's probably one of the biggest strengths of Paint Link is that because it's an effect and it's directly on a layer, you can move things around and comp with it without even having to think about it. It's just another After Effects effect. I just deleted all the keyframes because I want to show another option. If you go to Plugins, Paint Link Photoshop Panel, and bring up the frame control, now you can change frames without going back to After Effects. I'll press this button, which moves forward one frame in After Effects and then creates a new keyframe. If you want to go back a frame without creating a keyframe, you can use these. But these two buttons only go back and forth to existing keyframes 
and won't go any earlier than the first keyframe. Realistically, this frame control panel is going to be very convenient when working full screen in Photoshop and wanting to change frames without going back to After Effects. One useful parameter you should think about is render update delay, and it's set to one second by default. So this means that after you finish your drawing, so I'll just draw something there, after one second of inactivity, it will begin the process to send this image back to After Effects. In a lot of cases, you can set this to zero and you'll get faster results. However, the only time where this could be somewhat problematic is if I draw a stroke quickly and then draw another and then another and then another, you'll see that sometimes there's gonna be this hiccup because what happens is PaintLink sees that you finished drawing and it immediately attempts to send the whole image over to After Effects. That's because there's no delay. If you set this to a higher value, then PaintLink is going to wait three seconds from the last time you drew a stroke. So now you see there's absolutely no interruptions here. And then we're gonna wait one, two, three, and then you see it does that little push over to After Effects. Depending on how quickly you draw, you may want a faster or shorter render update delay. I think one second is fine for most people. If we wanted to retime this or move these points around, we can just click and drag and move the keyframes. I'll go ahead and stretch this 200%. And now these are a little bit more spaced out. So taking a look, I'm just gonna move this back to the top so we can see the drawings. Right now, we can see this frame, this PSD, and then we move to this blank. Now we can't see this PSD. And then we move over top of this next one and we can see it. And over the next one, there's no keyframe there, so we can't see it. So how do we make a hold keyframe? It's really easy. PaintLink considers any of these diamond keyframes to only exist on the frame that they're on. And if you make it not a diamond, so for example, control clicking, you can see now that this is persisting forward until the next keyframe. So even though there's no keyframe here, we're seeing this image on both of these frames. And again, we don't see this here. We can just make it not a diamond by control clicking or making it a hold frame if you really want to be consistent with how After Effects works. And then here, and then this will continue on until the end of time. So we would just have to create a blank frame here going to add update keyframe. So let's play this back. And you get the general idea. 